Hello and welcome everyone. Today we'll be discussing the palate which forms the roof of the oral cavity. It is divided into two parts, the anterior hard palate and the posterior soft palate. The hard palate is covered by a tightly bound layer of oral mucosa and forms much of the roof of the oral cavity. Above it, the hard palate is covered by the respiratory mucosa and forms the floor of the nasal cavity. The palatine process of the maxilla forms the anterior three quarters of the hard palate and the horizontal plates of the palatine bones forms the posterior one quarter. And of course, posteriorly, the hard palate is continuous with the soft palate. Mucosa of the hard palate in the oral cavity possesses numerous transverse palatine folds known as palatine rugae and a median longitudinal ridge known as palatine raf, which ends anteriorly in a small oval elevation known as incisive papilla. These landmarks are very important especially when the dentists are dealing with complete dentures because the retention of complete denture is difficult to achieve and hence a knowledge about these landmarks helps to better fabricate a comfortable retentive denture. Hard palate continues posteriorly into soft palate. The soft palate can get depressed to close the oropharyngeal isthmus and also can get elevated to separate the nasopharynx from the oropharynx. A small pear-shaped projection hangs from the soft palate that is known as uvula. Since soft palate is movable, it is formed by four muscles which allow it to move and one more muscle that is associated with the uvula. So in total, five muscles are associated with the soft palate. These five muscles are tensor villi palatini, levator villi palatini, palatopharyngeus muscle, palatoglossus muscle and the musculus uvulae. For each muscle, we will be going through the origin, insertion, function and the innervation of the muscle. The tensor villi palatini originates from the sphenoid bone and is inserted into the palatine aponeurosis. Its function is to tense the soft palate so that other muscles can work more effectively. The second function, it has to open the pharyngeal tympanic tube when the palate opens during yawning or swallowing. It is innervated by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. The rest of the four muscles of the soft palate are all innervated by the vagus nerve except tensor villi palatini which is as stated is innervated by the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. Levator villi palatini originates from the petrous part of the temporal bone and inserts into the superior surface of the palatine aponeurosis. It functions as the only muscle to elevate the soft palate above the neutral position. And since it is the only muscle that elevates the soft palate, one important clinical feature associated with this muscle is that clinically this muscle can be tested by asking a patient to say ah. If the muscle on each side is functioning normally, the palate elevates evenly in the midline. If one of the muscle on either side is not functioning, the palate deviates away from the abnormal side and towards the functioning side. Levator villi palatini is innervated by the vagus nerve, which is the 10th cranial nerve. Palatopharyngeus muscle originates from the superior surface of the palatine aponeurosis and inserts into the pharyngeal wall. Its function is to depress the soft palate, move the palatopharyngeal arc towards the midline like curtains, and it also functions to elevate the pharynx. Palatopharyngeus muscle is also innervated by the vagus nerve. Palatoglossus muscle originates from the inferior surface of the palatine aponeurosis and inserts into the lateral margin of the tongue. Its functions are to depress the soft palate, move the palatoglossal arc towards the midline and also elevate the back of the tongue. Palatoglossal muscle is also innervated by the vagus nerve. Finally, the musculus uvulae originates from the posterior nasal spine of the hard palate and inserts into the connected tissue of the uvula. And of course, since it is associated with the uvula, it elevates and retracts the uvula. Along with that, it also thickens the central region of the soft palate and helps levator villi palatini muscles to close the pharyngeal isthmus between the nasopharynx and the oropharynx. And of course, this muscle is also innervated by the 10th cranial nerve, which is the vagus nerve. Here is a small survey of the muscles of the palate. Blood supply of the palate comes from three arteries. which are the greater palatine branch of the maxillary artery, the ascending palatine branch of the facial artery and the palatine branch of the ascending pharyngeal artery. The maxillary, the facial and the pharyngeal arteries are all branches that arise in the neck from the external carotid artery. 
the ascending palatine artery of the facial artery and the palatine artery of the ascending pharyngeal artery mostly supply the soft palate region while the greater palatine artery after descending into the palatine canal gives origin to the lesser palatine artery and then continues through the greater palatine foramen into the inferior surface of the hard palate the greater palatine artery passes forward on the hard palate and then leaves the palate through the incisive canal into the medial wall of the nasal cavity where it terminates the greater palatine artery is a major supply of the hard palate and also supplies the palatal gingiva the lesser palatine artery passes through the lesser palatine foramen and also contributes to the vascular supply of the soft palate The veins of the palate also follow a similar path as the arteries and drain into the pterygoid plexus of veins in the infratemporal fossa or into the network of veins associated with the palatine tonsil which then drain into the pterygoid plexus or directly into the facial vein. Lymphatics from the palate drain into the deep cervical nodes. Innervation to the palate is supplied by the greater and the lesser palatine nerves and the nasopalatine nerve. The sensory fibers of these nerves originate into the pterygopalatine fossa from the maxillary nerve which is the branch of the trigeminal nerve. The parasympathetic fibers of the glands in the palate and the special fibers of taste which are located on the soft palate are all from a branch of the facial nerve. The greater palatine nerve travels through the greater palatine foramen and turns anteriorly to supply the hard palate and the gingiva as far as the first premolar while the lesser palatine nerve supplies the soft palate. The nasopalatine nerve comes from the nasal cavity through the incisive canal and fossa to reach the inferior surface of the hard palate. It supplies the gingiva and mucosa to the incisor and the canine. Now all of these nerves that is the greater and the lesser palatine nerves and the nasopalatine nerves are all branches of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. Remember these three nerves don't supply the maxillary teeth. The maxillary teeth are supplied by anterior, middle and posterior superior alveolar nerves which originate either directly or indirectly from the maxillary nerve of the trigeminal nerve. So although the main branch of all of these nerves is common which is the maxillary nerve, the subsequent branches of innervation are different for the gingiva and different for the maxillary teeth. I will be making a separate video explaining the anatomy of the teeth and also other anatomical features of the oral cavity. So make sure to subscribe for more video updates and lectures on various topics. For more study materials such as study notes, practice questions, quizzes, make sure to check out my Patreon page and consider supporting me and becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash studywithadentist. As always, I will meet you all next time. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.